Hello my lovelies, this is Rose Eric Nussie here. I wanted to um, give you guys another update video, and yes I know, my last video was an update video, but uh, actually uh, a lot has happened. A lot. A, a lot, a lot. And um, I hope you all are staying safe out there and staying sane out there. Um, but I just wanted to kind of... Um, update everybody on what's been going on the last couple months and why I kind of disappeared. So uh, some of you know that I had a, a surgery, relatively routine abdominal surgery, low risk surgery that was in June um, and I was on the mend. I even streamed a few times during, um, during my recovery and uh, put out that update video while I was in recovery and you know it was it was going slow. It was a pretty slow recovery. But um, I ended up not recovering because uh, for three months I couldn't eat solid foods and um, and I thought you know for the longest time like oh I'm just healing slowly I'm healing slowly it'll it'll get better eventually it'll get better eventually so um, at uh, at the point where um, it, it had been three months since my surgery and uh, liquids were becoming difficult to um, to drink water. Um, I went to the ER for fluids um, because I became dehydrated. Um, I was at that point vomiting water. Um, so this was in September. September I was uh, vomiting water. I couldn't keep down enough liquids to keep myself hydrated so I got some fluids at the ER. Then about two weeks later I was going through specialists at this point, and you know how hard it is to get in to see specialists. You you wait a month for f an appointment, and then he schedule he uh, orders a test for you, and then you wait three weeks for that test, and then you wait a month for the follow up to know what happened with the test. It's it's a nightmare. It just is. <laughs> so um, after two weeks of going to the hospital the first time, I went to the ER again because I was again dehydrated. Was extremely weak by that point, and um, they actually hospitalized me that night. The next day, um, they performed an emergency surgery after they got a look at some of my test results and found something kind of alarming. Um, they found during that, you know, emergency exploratory surgery, that scar tissue had wrapped itself around my stomach essentially strangling it, pinching it off and strangling it. So what they had to do was remove the scar tissue and the lower two-thirds of my stomach that had been being strangled and not receiving adequate blood supply for three months. From that surgery I lost a lot of blood and I became anemic um, because of low hemoglobin and um, it also didn't help that four days prior to that I had just donated stem cells from my blood um, to be the match organization which is an uh, organization I really highly recommend it's a, it's an organization that you know they give they do like a little swab of your cheek and they keep keep your DNA in a database and then when a cancer patient who needs stem cells or marrow um, needs a donation they look to their beta database to see if there's any close enough DNA matches and I was lucky enough to have been matched and it was something that was really important to me so even though I wasn't doing the greatest um, I didn't realize at that point how bad things were so I went ahead and did it and they um, yeah I lost some platelets um, I lost some platelets while I was giving those blood or while I was giving those stem cells which um, caused me to lose more blood during the surgery, which caused me to have l low hemoglobin count, which caused me to be anemic. <sighs> oh, but it, it just it just keeps going though. <laughs> so after the surgery, um, they started getting really concerned because um, my potassium got pretty low from how long I had been malnourished. Um, so they had me on an IV drip for several days. Shoot, I want to say like, like six days, six days. They probably 
six days out of the two weeks I was hospitalized, they had me on um, potassium drip, which if if you're in the medical field or if you've ever had it before, sucks, dude. It's like fire. It's like fire being injected into your veins. It hurts so damn bad. Um, even when they piggyback it off of saline, meaning that they kind of hook you up to saline and potassium and they kind of like feed you both at the same time to kind of dilute the potassium a little, it's still pretty painful. Um, they had to do a few EKGs. The, the, danger with, uh, the danger with having critically low potassium is that potassium is an electrolyte that your heart needs in order to continue contracting. It's, it's needed in order for the electrical impulses that go through your heart that, um, you know, stimulate the contractions of the chambers of the heart. You need potassium for that. So um, when people die from malnutrition, a lot of times, or from anorexia, or from bulimia, or whatever, things like that, it's because of the low potassium their heart literally stops because there's not enough potassium to keep the brain or the the heart um, contracting and pumping. So for a while there, I actually had three IV lines. I had one in my hand, two, um, and one in each arm. Um, so that wasn't looking very good. Um, I also started showing signs of infection. I got a fever. They saw a high white blood cell count. Um, they were pretty concerned about that too and I just wasn't doing very well and the doctors were really concerned for a, for a while. Um, they put me on antibiotics, they had um, a nurse coming in and checking my vital signs every half an hour, um, blood draws um, multiple times a day to check my blood levels, to check my potassium, to check, my, to check everything. Um, luckily I started to improve after that, though, I was pulling through it. And um, after I started recovering, um, they're like, okay, well, let's get you started on a liquid diet again. So I went to a liquid diet, and then I went to a full liquid diet, which means that I could have, like, any kinds of even thick, thicker liquid stuff. Oh, that's great, right? Because I hadn't eaten in a long time. Well, um, <laughs> actually... When they switched me to the liquid diet, it was the day that I was meant to be sent home. I had been in the hospital for I think 10 days at that point, and my t potassium was still low, so they were having me drink potassium solution, and they said, uh, we'll check, we'll check your blood again after you drink this potassium solution, and um, if, it, if it looks better, then we'll let you go home, and at this, t at this point, I'm desperate to go home. Um, my anxiety for the last few days that I was in there, probably for the final five days that I was in the hospital, was just astronomically high. I felt like, I legitimately felt like I was in days-long panic attacks, of t panic attacks that lasted days. It was the worst, just the worst, worst experience of my whole life. So I was drinking this potassium solution down, hoping that I could go home that day. And ever since the surgery, the, the emergency one, they had had a tube coming out of my abdomen, just kind of sticking out of my stomach, right? But it didn't, it wasn't going into my stomach, it was going into my abdominal cavity. And that was to help drain excess fluid that might build up um, because of the healing process of the surgery. And it was also an indicator of um, how my insides are doing you know, if make sure it wasn't cloudy, if it looked cloudy, then that would, you know, indicate an infection. So there's just there to monitor. You eventually want to see it stop looking reddish and looking more clear, etc. Well, anyway, I drank down the rest of my potassium solution and um, and then I, I looked down at my little drainage tube that I had there and I noticed that it was completely full and the nurse had just emptied it. So at that moment, as soon as I saw that, I knew what the implications were, and I started freaking out. So I called the nurse, 
and I told her I thought there was a hole in my stomach. She goes and she gets the surgeon, surgeon comes in, he takes a look, he goes, yes, yes, you have a hole in your stomach. Um, and the liquids that I had been drinking for the last several days had been emptying into my abdominal cavity from my stomach. And that's super bad. It's super bad. Um, it's not as bad as having a hole in your intestines because there's less bacteria in your stomach, but um, there is still a possibility of sepsis from that. And um, so I, w I was initially extremely terrified that that meant that I needed another surgery and that would have probably been the worst case scenario because after that emergency surgery I was in so much pain like an excruciating amount of pain and nothing that they gave me was helping not morphine, not Dilaudid, not Percocet nothing especially, especially the first few days after my surgery it, it hurt to breathe um, it was a pain that I can't describe and is just off the pain scale, okay? It was like 10 out of 10 worst pain that you can imagine. And I remember that during those first couple days after the surgery, I would watch the clock in my hospital bed or in, in my room and just watch the minutes tick by waiting for my next, you know, scheduled pain medicine, hoping that that time it would help. It was just something that I had to endure. There was no escaping it at all. Um, I was in too much pain to sleep. Nothing that I brought to entertain myself with could distract me from it. So thinking that I had to have another surgery was, was devastating. Um, luckily, that was not um, what the surgeon thought that we needed to do. Instead, um, I was going to have to have nothing to eat or drink for three and a half weeks to let the hole in my stomach heal. Um, so because we had to do that, you know, I still needed to get nutrition, they place what's called a PIC line, which is a central line IV that they, uh, they, they kind of almost, they almost surgically insert it, kind of. It's, it's, it's a sterile, sterile surgery-like procedure where they put this IV into a deep muscle, or a deep vein in your arm, and that IV actually um, it runs all the way from your arm and then ends at your heart. So they were going to have me on this IV nutrition that is very highly concentrated in um, vitamins, uh, nutrients, uh, fats, um, everything that my body was going to need that I couldn't get because I wasn't going to be able to eat or drink fluids, etc. And um, that concentration of uh, IV nutrition, it's too it's too, what do you call it? It's too concentrated to put, to allow in the blood vessels of the body. So that's why they literally needed that IV to run directly to my heart so that when I was receiving the IV, the IV nutrition would be dumped on top of my heart and not go into my, my you know, blood vessels. Um, so after they did that, I was released from the hospital I was there for a total of 13 days, and I was going to, um, my, my surgeon had really wanted me to get out of the hospital as soon as possible because my immune system by then was completely obliterated from um, how long I had been malnourished, plus I had been on multiple, multiple, multiple antibiotics and um, just, you know, lost a lot of blood. I was so weak, like physically weak, it just... He wanted to get me out of there because Corona was starting to get worse again. This is the beginning of November. So he released me home and I had a home health nurse come out to my house several times a week. And they would check on my IV nutrition. My fiance had to change my IV uh, every day, um, flush, flush the little catheters of my IV every day. And that IV I had on me for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and for three weeks. And um, other things arose during that time when I was at home. I 
at the very end of that those three weeks, I accidentally pulled out my pick line because it got caught on something because I'm the most clumsy, careless person on the face of the planet. Got caught on something and it ripped it out 10 centimeters. So I had to stop my IV nutrition. It was pulled too far out for me to receive it anymore. So we had to urgently get me into uh, an imaging test to see if the hole was closed to figure out do I need to have another pick line put in and continue my IV nutrition or is it healed now and I can start eating again. Um, another thing is the drainage tube that had been sticking out of my abdomen for at that point four weeks. It had been it's this hole in my stomach with a tube going into it, hole in my abdomen. Um, had been there for about four weeks. That wound ended up getting infected because it had been in place for so damn long. So, um, basically, we did the imaging. We got in to do the imaging. They took a look. It looked like the hole in my stomach had healed. Um, and so the doctor surgeon started me on a liquid diet again, and that went, it, it went okay. It was great. It was the first time in, it was the first time in almost a month that I was able to consume anything. Um, after the clear liquid diet put me on full liquids, after full liquids he transitioned me onto soft foods. When he transitioned me onto soft foods in the middle of December, the problem started again. Um, I was throwing up solid foods again. I was not able to stomach them. It was making me really, really sick. So, um, so he put me back on liquids, and I've actually been on liquids ever since. Um, he did another imaging test to hopefully show different type of in um, imaging test to help maybe show what the problem is, but we still don't really know. I am better than I was before um, my stay in the hospital because I'm able to drink liquids easily now. I can drink as, I mean, I can, slowly, I can drink as much water as I want. My, uh, my stomach is one-third the size that it used to be because of how much they had to remove. But um, after I got home from the hospital for several weeks, I was too weak to do anything. I still haven't gained any muscle back. I'm still incredibly weak. I can't do things around the house. I can't, I can't vacuum. I can't fold laundry. I can't do laundry. I can't make my, I can't make food. I can't, I can't anything. Um, I can stay at my computer for maybe like an hour, maybe two hours. But then I get short of breath and exhausted and I have to lay down again. So it's been a real struggle the last, the last few months. It's been really, really, really rough. Um, last week, let's see, what's today? Sunday. Like a week, a week and some days ago, um, I got a fever. I got the body aches. I got chills. I got, I got the whole thing. I got the whole mess of symptoms. And I was really worried that I had caught COVID somehow, even though I had been self-isolating for the majority of the past month, except for the occasional, like, get in the car with um, my fiancé when he goes to go pick up food or something. And then, you know, we will wear masks in the drive through But with my immune system being so weak, any exposure to any kind of pathogen has a much higher chance of taking hold in my body um, because there's not hardly anything to fight it off. So I went to the uh, ER again um, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, and um, they tested me for COVID and it came back negative, thank God, because um, in the, I guess, the medical state that I'm in right now, like with my current health, COVID would probably, probably devastate me. Um, but I am getting better from that. I'm still have, having some symptoms, so hopefully I just caught, like, the flu, and that's all it was. Um, because I did get a flu shot. I always get a flu shot. Get your flu shot, guys. <laughs> um, get the vaccine when it's available. 
because uh, I will. As soon as it's available to me, I am getting that vaccine. And uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of been my life for the last six months, guys. It's it's been one hell of a roller coaster, mostly a downward roller coaster, but <laughs> it uh, it started going up, and it was just um the stay in the hospital was the hardest. My fiance came to see me every single day, and I'm super thankful that all of that happened during a time when he could still go see me, as opposed to now, where hospitals are not allowing visitors at all whatsoever. Um, I can't imagine going through what I went through completely alone for two weeks. But, um, dude, guys, it was crazy. It was crazy. For a while I wasn't looking good, and, like, legit thought, I, legit thought that I might die. And that was a very life-changing experience for me. So, um, positive notes would be I am better than I was before. I continue to get slowly better than I than you know I was right after I was released from the hospital. Um, also. I have a tremendous amount of uh, appreciation for things that I didn't realize I was taking for granted before, but I apparently I was. Um, when you no longer have the things that are part of your normal, you, you realize that you took that normal for granted. So now I appreciate everything a lot more. And I have a lot more sympathy, I guess, for other people, people who are going through illnesses or surgeries or hospitalizations, like, I can relate a hell of a lot more now um, with what they're going through, the fear, the uncertainty, the the pain, and so um, it was a teaching experience as well. Now. Concerning the channel, uh, this ended up being longer than I wanted it to be, but it was a long story and it kind of kind of needed to be told. As far as the channel, when I am doing better, um, I intend to come back and start recording again. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be doing recording instead of streaming um, because I don't think that I'll be able to sit a at a computer and stream for like two hours anymore. I'll have to do small chunks of time, like half an hour at a time. Um, but yeah, so that's what's been going on with me. I hope all of you had a much better Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, and a new year. And I hope all of you are staying safe out there and you're doing all the good things and you're wearing your masks because you know, there's a lot of immunocompromised people out there, and, you know, they gotta be protected, and you gotta help them, pr you, you gotta help protect them too. You're protecting yourself, but you're protecting others too, and that's really important. And if you're interested in that, um, that, uh, stem cell or bone marrow, um, organization that I took part in, you can Google Be The Match, and it's uh, super painless to, to have just a little cheek swab and you may, you may never be contacted. I wasn't contacted until four years later and uh, it really helps. And my stem cells went to someone with uh, um, leukemia that uh, could very possibly give him years of life that he wouldn't have otherwise had. And that's a wonderful thing to take part in. And I highly encourage it. So. Anyway, thank you lovelies for being so wonderful and so supportive because I know you are and you always have been and uh, love you all. I will see you soon. <laughs>